it's the next level. Hey, panelers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And Mark, do you realize we are 19 episodes away? 19 from 100. Wow. That's, that's crazy. 81. This is episode 81 of Panels to Pixels. That is amazing. We've been doing this for, what, almost three years? Or is it three uh, years now? Three. I think it's three years now. When did Punisher start? 20, 2017, October. And we started podcasting 2018, I think. So two years Something like that. I have yeah. to go back and see when Punisher. You started podcasting on Punisher the January after it dropped. Correct. So that's that. And then it was about, I don't know. What, I've never been able to track. It was about six or seven episodes in, maybe yeah. five episodes in when you were like, Steve, you're just the, you're just going to be the permanent co-host. I can't. <laughs> we're just, we're just, I'm stuck with you and it's going to be you. <laughs> and here we are, you know, two years later. So. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's it, two and a half or more, definitely. Yeah. And, and Ben actually pointed that out, and I was, I'm surprised. Yeah. It's been going on for so long, and we've been having so much fun. <laughs> oh, I love it, I love it. And I don't know where we're going to go from here, but uh, we've got a lot of a lot of options that we can go to, and uh, a lot of material it. too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, listeners, so basically we're doing Daredevil Season 3, and this episode we're doing Episodes 5 and 6. So the synopsis for Daredevil Season 3, Episode 5, The Perfect Game, is to quell the rising backlash over his release, Fisk serves up a scapegoat to the actual FBI. Dex misses the mark when he runs into a woman from his past. So a lot's been going on within this episode, but there's a lot that's missing based upon that actual uh, that actual synopsis too. Yeah, that that's really really short. I mean, it it I guess it sums up pretty well what he did. He did give them Matt Murdock, even though I'm a little I don't know. I've got thoughts on that, and uh, you know, Dex missing the mark with this woman. That's like one brief scene in the whole that sets off a whole bunch of stuff. You know, yeah. but, uh, so eh, I don't know. Synopses writers have got their work cut out for them. That is true. And with that, we should get to our top five. I'm Daredevil. And Steve, you should go first. Sure. My, my first one is just really short. Uh, it's just the fact that we don't see Matt until the end of this episode. I thought that was a very bold choice of the writers and the directors that, uh, that you don't even see him. We see the cab, you know, being pulled out of. The river and we see the door broken open and the lawyer saying there's no body found <laughs> but we don't actually see matt until all the way to the end of the episode yeah that is true so this is a matt less episode as exactly, a, exactly yeah of his uh, show yeah <laughs> definitely of this show not matt lock matt less uh anyhow uh my number five would be the date with dex and julie and the fact that julie was you know, appalled at Dex. He met her at the bar while on duty, but then blew it. That was really creepy. Yeah, it's it starts out really like a really cool kind of meet cute moment where she's like, hey, didn't you used to work at the suicide prevention hotline? So did I, you know, and he's like, oh, yeah, I remember yeah. you. And so then they get to talking and she's like, oh, I just got this job. I got paid a bunch of money just to, if I could come today. And it's in, you know, so you see that there's some machinations kind of in the works there of how she got it, but we don't find out till the end of the episode, really all that, that went into that. But then they go through this whole dinner and she starts to get, you know, that creepy kind of feeling from him, like you said, because she talks about running by the FDR and he's like, oh yeah, I run there too. And then he says, uh, you worked at the suicide prevention hotline for three years. And she's like. Yeah, but how did you know that? You only worked there for a year. Yeah. 
And then he's, <laughs> and she had said she'd been a dancer, but she tore her knee. And he's like, well, when ballet didn't work out, you decided to become a bartender. And she's like, wait a minute. I never said ballet. And then she says, I'm going to go feed my dog. And he's like, you don't have a dog. And she's like, how do you know about a dog? <laughs> yeah. And, and so it's, it's like this slow, dis, it's like this descent into, she really thinks she's found this really cool guy. And suddenly, nope. He's a stalker and he's creepy. <laughs> yeah. He found she found the worst stalker known to man. Somebody yeah. who just follows her consistently. Oof, 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 oof. No. So uh my number four is uh Fisk convincing the FBI that, that Matt was kinda on his payroll. And I, I was a little surprised that Nadim and, and the team kind of jumped at this because he doesn't really give them any evidence. I mean, I guess he eventually gives them that that deposited check where he where they see that they worked briefly for a yeah. company that was a shell company for him and that that's the all the evidence they have everybody else is like denying it and like karen's like no we didn't when he shows her the canceled check or the deposited check she's like well we didn't know it was fisk at the time and then when he talks to foggy foggy's like no everything we've done has been everything we did as nelson and murdoch were was above board it was ethical we didn't know and he, he's like you the client was allegedly working for fisk yeah. and it's just all this nadim is so big on finding evidence but yet he's not really finding a lot of evidence that matt murdoch is a bad guy i mean fisk no. says says he bribed judges he planted evidence he gave false testimony in in all this this and this and I, but I'm he's not focusing my... on the other aspects which would be Fisk, yeah, and 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 saying, hey, well, Fisk did this, yeah, and 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 corroboration of what Matt was doing to show that it was pointed at Matt, yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of it's like he is a a Fisk fan, as exactly. it were, yeah, yeah. And my number four would be Fisk in his mind looking into Dex's life as a kid, having his file and understanding where he came from and who he was. But this was just really disturbing because it was like everything in, it was like as if Fisk was in a dream state and looking into Dex's world. And, you know, I think that's a, a show or something. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, but the thing is, is the fact that it's kind of strange and and Fisk is going to use this individual, you know, meaning, you know, Dex, uh, as disturbed as he is, for his own whim. You can see it, just based upon how he's trying to get into the mind of Dex. It just shows the lengths that Fisk will do to get what he wants by ni basically manipulating people. And basically, Dex is definitely a focus based upon all this. And yeah. it, it's really sad because you could see that with what Dex wants, he's very, very much prone to influence because uh, Fisk is one of those people that could just manipulate and just talk himself into your mind. Yeah, and this leads right into my number three because my number three basically is, is kind of the same thing. is just Fisk, you know, gathering all that information from those those files it was funny because the lawyer says oh this is all the investigators could get and then he pops down this rather large box with a lot of files in there yeah. and i guess it was a little confusing to me because there was a bunch of those tapes of the therapist sessions in those boxes but also dex still has some of those those tapes as well that he yeah. listens to and but there was there was some other stuff going on there that I thought was really interesting that we have this idea after he killed his coach that this therapist kind of keys into what his problem is. I mean, I think she realizes that he's a sociopath. Dex is a sociopath. And yeah. she kind of trains him and teaches him how to fool the people around him so much so that he's able to become an FBI SWAT member. Yeah, exactly. And and I, I, there was a parallel there between uh, like Dexter Morgan from the TV show, uh, the Showtime TV show Dexter with the same name. Oh, but, I love uh, that show. Uh, yeah, but you know he wasn't an actual cop. He was just a a forensic. He was a blood spat, uh, splatter analysis uh, yeah. analyst. And but it, it, I have to suspend my disbelief a little bit here, I guess, because it just seems that 
that the FBI would have better trained psychologists and psychiatrists that they would pick up on Dex's problems, especially if he's taking some sort of medication to keep yeah. it, you know, under wraps that, so it just, I kind of had to, it took me out of it a little bit because it just seemed to me it was a little, it was, it was hard for Too me to obvious. disbelieve. Too obvious. Well, it was hard for me to disbelieve that he could have gotten to the point that he is in the FBI with this deep of a, of a sociopathy. Is that the word? Yeah. yeah. Sociopathy. Especially when in one dinner conversation with Julie, she figures out that he's creepy and there's something wrong with him. How many years has he been with the FBI and he's been able to fool every psychiatrist that he's had to talk to, every therapist? It just, it, it was a little, it was a little. Yeah. And the fact that one me. person that he has one conversation with that he's been stalking has yeah. really picked up on every little nuance of what, wait a minute, how do you know that? Well, yeah. How do you know this about me? That shows that you're, you know. Yeah, there's something like, deeper. There's something wrong. Are you are you listening to that police song? <laughs> uh, I'll be watching you all the time. <laughs> you know. <laughs> exactly. So what was your number three? Uh, that would be, you can see how disturbed that Dex has been since he was a child. So, which leads to what you stated before about the coach. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he is particular in his ways, though. He he keeps a, a clean place all the time, if you notice. He keeps everything perfect. He wants everything right, aimed at what he wants to have, which is this girl that he went out on a date for, but also for anything that he wants in particular. Like, uh, it, it kind of focuses more towards where Fisk is, because Fisk is kind of manipulating him, so now he feels that he has to show something to Fisk, you know? Yeah, exactly. And like I said, we, we saw this whole thing of Fisk kind of getting in his head, and we're, yep. we're seeing that Fisk definitely has more going on outside of the hotel. We find out more about that in the next episode, but just this whole thing of we've already seen that Fisk is able to access, like, the cameras from the prison on yep. his phone. He's able to call Dex. He's, he's manipulating he, a lot of people in order to get what he wants in order yeah. to manipulate Dex as he, yeah. you know, he wants, you know? Yeah, yeah. and he's he's getting, it just, it, it is, yeah, it's just really, it's it's an interesting dynamic there that I, I'm interested to see how it plays out the rest of the, the season, so. Yeah, yeah, and it, it seems oh, so odd. Yeah. Yeah. So my number two, which brings it, that brings us to my number two, is yes. uh, Karen admitting uh, about the what happened with Je with James Wesley, or yeah, I think it was James Wesley. And I had to actually went back. I actually went back into season one, and I, I kind of fast forwarded a little bit and watched some scenes from episode eleven and episode twelve of season one because that's how far back this James Wesley thing goes. Yeah. Is he kidnapped her, and then she he, she shoots him to get out of where he's, he's holding her. And then at the, so at the end of episode 11, she shoots and kills him and she leaves the room and she takes the gun with her. And we see in the very beginning of episode 12 that she throws the gun into the river, which she tells foggy in the next episode that it's in the Hudson river. I didn't watch any more of episode 12 to see if Fisk, cause the whole thing is James Wesley was kind of the, that fixer guy that she goes to in the bar to find out about uh, who tells her, like who scares her so much, tells her that like her family's address and all these, these people that he's going to kill. And that's the same thing James, James Wesley did. So I, it's an interesting thing, but I don't know if Fisk ever figured out that Karen was the one who killed James Wesley or, or not. So um, that'll be interesting through the rest of the season if we see that i'm wondering if we're going to see a confrontation between karen and this new fixer the guy's name is escaping me um they said it a few times in the episode she went and saw him at the bar and tried oh, yeah. to get him to talk about fisk the guy with all slicked hair and, and the, the guy who said i don't make what did he say he said i don't uh, i don't fix problems i make them disappear yeah was, basically was what he said that was the same kind of guy that james wesley was for fisk in season one yeah definitely wow yeah. Now you were talking about basically last season. No, for... season one. No, I had to, I, season I'm, one. Oh, I'm okay. telling you, man. I went. It goes all the way back. That's what surprised me. I thought it was season two, 
But I had to go all the way back to season one, episodes 11 and 12, to see this all play out. And that's what really surprised me. That it's a really a long time. And the fact that the, the FBI is dragging out this guy's picture from that long ago really kind of surprised me. Yeah. It's like, I'm with you. I, at first, I thought it was season two. And I kind of went through the season two episodes on IMDb trying to figure out where was this guy at. And I finally had to Google uh, wow. James Wesley. And with Daredevil to see that, oh, he was in season one. You got to go all the way back to season one for this guy. So these people at Netflix were actually doing a good job with writing. Why yeah, this stop? this season three, they're really <laughs> tying things in from from previous from previous stuff. It's really, really good. And these they were ready to do a, an, a season four, too. Oh, yeah, my goodness. It's unfortunate. Yeah, it's so unfortunate. We had, had such good TV for the past yeah. two years. <laughs> Man. <laughs> So what was your number two? My number two would be Karen is going to Foggy about the interrogation she got from Nadim. Plus the FBI, you know, coming after her in the beginning. You know, basically everything that you talked about. But they see her as a prime suspect of knowing Matt's whereabouts. She's been basically protecting him. And they basically know <laughs> all this. This is strange to the FBI in some way because they they really can't narrow down where Matt is. And they know that Karen's being elusive, Foggy is being elusive. They're just not saying anything. Yeah, and it, it really surprises me, especially in the next episode when we get to where everybody is just assuming that Fisk is telling the truth, that Matt Murdock is a bad guy, is a criminal. Yeah. And, and I'm like, there's no proof of that, though. You're not showing them anything. They, they explained the check. They explained why this, you know, why this CGI company and stuff. So it just, it just really surprises me that the FBI is going to these lengths for Fisk just because he dropped this one name. You know, it just, it seems a little, a little much. Yeah. So that brings us to my number one. Yes, it does. Okay. My number one is, is just that ending. I already talked about the fact that, that we don't see Matt until the end, but then we see him come in into his apartment. He's stumbling around because he still had the effects of that, whatever was in that hypodermic needle that he got yep. shot with. And he's he's all, you know, wet. And then he, he changes clothes and he goes to bed, but he wakes up hearing the FBI in the building and he just barely gets out before Nadim and those guys bust through the door, which we saw at the beginning of the episode. Yeah. And which leads me to my number one, which would be Matt all beat up with silhouettes in the apartment. But then hearing everything pointed to him on the rooftop. It's like an awakening to him that everyone is out to get him at some point. And that's really where everything is leading to. Everything is pointing towards Matt and he's trying to hide in the shadows, but he's not really having a good time of it at this point. <laughs> so... So I had one quote here that, that stood out to me that I really liked. It was when we had that, that scene with Dex and his therapist when she's on the breathing treatments and she's not going to be his therapist anymore. And she says, death always wins, Dex. And then she says a few other things, but she wraps it up with, we never hasten it with violence. So he definitely, we can see that when he was a kid, at least, he had this therapist in his life. She was kind of, after he had killed his coach, she was she was there she was that kind of sounding board. She was that, as she calls it, that uh, that person to help him not stray from the path. And we see what happens when he when he loses that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, I have a few quotes. So one would be Dex knows he's being followed while running. He sees Karen following him. He notices. I don't, yeah, I don't think that was Karen. That was, we, I think that was what that scene you're talking about was he was following Julie. Okay. Not, not Karen following him. All right. So it, it gets a little bit confusing there, yeah. It does get confusing because there's, <laughs> there's so much going on in the action. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the others would be Fisk. Does this look like a blind man to you? And Fisk to his executive about the video, he was basically presenting to him and the next would be uh fisk naming matthew during his conversation with nadim as someone he employed someone who has perjured and did wrong fisk places the blame onto matt which you already brought up but that is so intense in that sense if you watch that scene so it it's basically fisk saying hey you need to be focusing everything onto matt murdoch and he can't be found 
His body's yeah. never been found, and you need to go find him. And that's why Nadim is actually sent on his mission to actually interrogate, you know, Foggy and Karen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I just, I just go back to the fact that it just it just seems like, like you said, Nadim is really a fanboy of Fisk because he really takes off on this one little. He just gives them vague information and says, "Oh, there's this lawyer that worked for me, and his name is Matt Murdock, and I've got him on my payroll, and and that's it." And they just take off running with that. They don't. It just it just it bugged me that I I really like the the Nadim character, but it just seems like he just he's just taking Fisk at his at his word with yeah. with this Matt Murdock stuff and, and I'm hoping this gets resolved pretty quickly that they that they can convince Nadim that no Matt's not the bad guy here. Wilson Fisk is the bad guy. Yeah, and I hope Nadim doesn't really suffer any consequences regarding that though. The only thing I had uh, extra that we haven't really talked about was you talked about that Dex's apartment was all clean and, and precise and stuff. But then after he has that date with Julie, he comes back to the apartment and he just freaks out. He gets, you know, he punches the wall. He gets blood on his shirt. He throws yeah. that knife at the picture of Julie and all of them from the suicide prevention hotline. You know, it just it, it was just a. a of huge freak out and, and he, he grabs one of those tapes and he starts listening to it because he knows he's got to calm down. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. You would think, but nobody's really looking at Dex at this point and they're not going to focus in on his apartment and actually do forensics there. So, you know, it, it just shows that he's being manipulated. And on top of that, his obsessive compulsive disorder mm -hmm. from what yeah. I could see on this girl yeah. Is getting to the point of madness, and that's why this gets into his head. Yeah. So, so you had one more note there that you wanted to bring up? Uh, yeah, well, CGI makes me laugh, <laughs> all because that is part of the Daredevil comic universe. And listeners, uh, if you've not read Daredevil or you intend on to, basically, those are if you look at what was it, the hand is basically for Daredevil. Well, those that are fans of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles will know that what I'm talking about at this point. TGI. So you got CGI, which is for uh, Daredevil, but you have TGI in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, universe, in this case, yeah, which would be the foot. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, CGI was part of the hand in the Daredevil universe, Th this is what they were going for if they went into a basically a fourth season. And mm -hmm. it really bothers me for the fact that we the only time we got into the hand was really in Defenders. Yeah. And, and that happened for like a short stint. And I was hoping they would actually further that. But I think they were going to go into more of that into season four. Yeah. But we never got that. So episode six uh, was titled The Devil You Know. And the synopsis for that that the, those writers gave was uh, driven to the edge. Dex loses his way until he's offered a lifeline by Fisk. Matt yeah. comes to Karen for help, which she agrees to give on one condition. <laughs> I'm Daredevil. So, Mark, what is your number five for episode six well that would be matt talking to karen in his old apartment that she has been taking care of all this time karen's delivery to matt about knowing that he talked to foggy and she knew he needed something the way that deborah ann wall delivered that line was so sincere honestly you know that's a credit to her acting ability honestly she She's a really good actress. I like her. And yes, I think she is beautiful. <laughs> Everybody, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I do. But I think she is a great actress completely. Uh, you know, if you look at her uh, scope of work over the past number of years, and that's excluding Daredevil, and you, you could add a little bit of True Blood in there too. But, you know, you could actually see her in Escape Room, and she did really good in that movie, and it's very underrated. So my number five um, just goes back to kind of close to what you were talking about, but just at the beginning when we see Karen and she's remembering her conversation with Foggy, I really loved that little interplay between them where she, she doesn't want to tell him that she's like, well, I've got to, I can only tell you under the guise of lawyer 
confidential, you know, a uh, client lawyer confidentiality. And he's like, give me five bucks. And she's like, I only have three. And he goes, it's, that's enough. I'm now your lawyer. So she, then she admits to him about the killing of James yep. Wesley. And I, in, in, like I said, just a few minutes ago, I went back and rewatched that scene. And really the only, the only thing I could say that they could maybe charge her with would be just the fact that she ran and didn't call the police she shot him seven times mm -hmm. and you know, the number of times you stopped the threat and he was, he kept trying to get up. So you shoot until the threat ends. And that's, that's the way we were taught to do it in the military. That's the way I understand when you're shooting for self-defense, you stop to end the threat yeah. and that's what she did. And so, yeah, like I said, there's a little bit of things she did wrong, you know, throwing the gun away in the river, not calling the police, but then obviously and like I said, I didn't watch the rest of episode 12 from season one to see how Fisk cleaned it up because like she says, he's just missing now. Yeah. So obviously Fisk somehow cleaned it up and, and made it to where he was just missing and, and uh, his body was never found. Hmm. Yeah, I wish <sighs> there's so much that they could clean up in season four. <laughs> yeah, there was there was a lot, of, a lot of stuff that if they'd done a season four, they could have wrapped it up. If I just wish it's one of those things where you wish they hadn't canceled it. They had done like what they did with Jessica Jones. If they they knew, hey, we're we're going to give you one more season. Give you let's let's have one more season of this. That way you can wrap up these storylines. You can close it out with him still being alive and being Daredevil, so that you can do more stuff yeah. with him. But at least clean up these these this messy loose ends that we at this point. Yeah, yeah, that's the whole thing. Yeah. And like I said, with uh, Charlie Cox being eyed for the MCU, the, I don't think they will actually bring in Deborah Ann Wall and Eldon to reprise their roles as Karen or Foggy. So, you know, that that's really a sad shame. But if they bring in Charlie Cox, yeah, we get Charlie Cox back. But it's an ensemble cast, in my opinion. You have those two actors, as well as uh, Vincent D'Onofrio as Kingpin and who are we going to replace with Kingpin? You know? Yeah. It's all speculation. It at is. This point. I mean, it that, it that definitely stuff, is. That stuff that, that if we had gotten a season four, it would have been great, but we didn't. So yeah, uh, I know I'm living in the past. <laughs> <laughs> so what was your number four? My number four would be uh Fisk being the Kingpin and manipulating Dex. Uh, he has him in his grasps, basically saying that society will punish him for the things he can do like them because everybody else does exactly what Fisk does in some respect as far as political and sort of money-based things so Fisk knows how to get into people's heads in some way Fisk knew things about Dex then Dex gets investigated so now basically he has to you know fish Dex out of there to make him his peon in, in some respect, you know, somebody that he can manipulate. My number four is very similar. It's just the fact that we see that at the beginning there where they're bringing all that, that stuff into the, the suite when the, the lawyer talks about the fact that, okay, it's time for the FBI to now, you know, he's kind of calling in those debts now. Okay, now mm -hmm. you got to do all the things that you said you're going to do because we gave you this information. So they, they let Fisk get out of his prison garb. He starts dressing like the kingpin. He's, he's furnishing the hotel suite with his stuff that he likes. And I just, I really, really liked, <laughs> there was one thing that occurred to me during this scene is Dex kind of stumbles in and the other Asian is <laughs> like, whoa, you look bad and you're two hours early. And Dex is like, Ugh, why don't you get us some <laughs> coffee? And so she leaves and he turns the tapes off again and he goes and sees fisk now i want to know who in the fbi is reviewing these tapes because they're gonna have to say exactly. something about all these dead <laughs> spots they're like hey what happened to the, the the tape for this hour here where whatever was going on and they're like exactly. oh we don't know somebody turned the cameras off what <laughs> i'm just like i'm like this is one of those things that i'm that the show uh it just it bugged me that i was just like what what are they doing Who's reviewing these tapes? Where where are they going, and what's what's happening with it? It just—I guess oh, they got a lot of donuts uh, delivered there, anyway. or something. You know, it's it's ridiculous. 
<laughs> I guess. And, and I just, I love that, that conversation that Dex has with Fisk where he, he basically figured out that Fisk, like you said, this, this goes back to the manipulation thing that Fisk had manipulated getting Julie there in the bar so that they would see each other. And Fisk knew that if they saw each other, they would probably hit it off. And that then Dex would do something to ruin it because even he says that to Dex, he's like, Julie's not going to understand you. You know, ne- you can't have happiness with her. She's never going to be like, it's really, like you said, it's Fisk really getting into his head. It's Fisk really trying to reel him in and bring him under his employee because he sees Dex's skills and he knows Dex it can do things, whether he's, and this is one of the things that we talked a little bit about last episode, yeah. I think, or maybe two episodes ago that would daredevil can be considered a meta human because I mean, he was chemically mm-hmm. enhanced, even though he's blind, he did have that, that chemical enhancement. So he's technically a meta human. And I don't know with, with Dex, it really seems like his powers metahuman. are a little more meta yeah a little more meta human than just they're not um, i i think he's just very talented for what he does yeah he's very precise and to who he is yeah it just it just seemed it, it, it i guess it's... even with matt you know matt as a blind person a lot of people that hone their uh other senses if they wanted to right but he he has extrasensory perception though he has he has he does. This yeah that sonar, sonar kind that of he does yeah that's, that's over yeah. over his other senses so okay I, i'll i'll give you i'll give you that dex is not technically a metahuman but he really he his skills are so good at. He's just a psychotic that is so skilled and is precise in everything he does. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's really what it lies down to with Dex. Yeah. Okay. But uh, my number three? Yeah, well, that will be the scene with Sister Maggie and Karen. And she confides within Karen about Matt. Within that scene, there it, there's so much love in there from Sister Maggie, apparently, with the words she says when describing and talking about Matt. Uh, it makes me feel like there's something underlying there. I, I, I don't think so. I, I mean, I think it's just matronly. I don't think it's anything romantic. I think it's I think it's definitely... She, Not romantic. I definitely think she feels like a mother to him because he didn't have yeah. a mother. His father was gone. And when he came to the orphanage, he was blind and she was able to take care of him. So there's definitely, and it's not just that because she also remembers that quote from Karen's article about Daredevil. So she's putting it together that Karen knows that Matt is Daredevil also. And so she, yeah, and, so it's really, yeah. yeah and a, then Karen loves yeah, Matt. It's too. a great scene. It really yeah. is. Those two played well together. Yeah. Um. So that brings us to mine number three. It, my three is Matt is just the fact that Matt went to Karen for her help uh, to find the, the guy who stabbed who stabbed Fisk in the in the prison. And it just it it was one of those things that I kind of went back and forth on it in my brain because he he puts her in danger. And then he's like, no, stay away from me. I don't want you to be in danger. And then he's like, oh, wait, go find this drug guy, you know, and even though he was following her and he was able to break in there before those guys did anything to her. It just, it it just, it's, it's perplexing to me, this dual thing that he has with putting her and foggy in danger. And then like, Oh no, I don't want you guys to be in danger, you know? Uh, And just like we see at the end of the episode, when, when uh, Dex devil, that's what I'm going to call him. When Dex devil breaks into (laughs) the, the newspaper building, he's, he's done the same thing. He's brought, He's brought the danger right there. He's brought them right to where the danger is. And it just, it just yeah. seems, it was just perplexing to me. This, that, that, that fact that he couldn't find this guy on his own. So he brings in Karen and then he follows her until she gets attacked basically. Yeah. Stranger yeah. danger. <laughs> just stay away from it. <laughs> uh, my number two would be uh, foggy representing Matt to Nadim. Mm-hmm. It took a lot, but He's being the friend that he is to Matt in the end, and I love that. Yeah, I, I have that quote down in our in our quotes where he's talking to Karen about their the friendship with Matt, and it's it's you can really see that in the first few episodes, Foggy was really torn. Once he fi- once he found out that Matt was was alive, he was really torn mm-hmm. between this forgiving him and letting him back in but becoming friends again so again it, it, we'll just i mean i don't want us to keep harping on it but 
a season four would have been great to to see. To oh, see. definitely. So, uh, my yeah. number two is just really, really quick. It, it was I thought it was interesting that when Dex is in his apartment, he's kind of hearing Julie's voice with his words when he had the gun and he was about to shoot himself. And then Fisk calls him out of the blue just before he's about to shoot himself. And, and Fisk makes him the offer uh, about becoming Dex Devil to, to go take care of uh, the guy uh, who stabbed him. I can't remember his name. They said yeah. his name several times in the episode. <laughs> We're terrible. All right. So you're number one. I think we have the same number one. Yeah, basically. Yeah, it is. So basically my number one would be the fight between the two daredevils. That that was basically amazing to me. Dex playing the daredevil in the costume Matt had and Matt in the old black garb. Honestly, that was so cool just yeah. to watch. So basically Dex taking on Fisk on ruining Daredevil in this scene particularly. So amazing. It's a challenge basically. That ending scene though when Dex states that he is the Daredevil kills Jasper. Jasper that was the that harms, was the bad guy's the prisoner's name. Yeah. And he harms Foggy. Yeah. You can tell Matt is torn as he leaves the scene. The the whole dramatic exit is really heart-wrenching. But that end when they all think that the Daredevil did yeah. it. Mm. Ugh. Yeah, I I just oh man, really. Yeah. But that's how these comic book shows Exactly. Go. You know, I really like the, the fight scene. Like, I, I'm right there with you. It was a really great fight scene between the two of them. And seeing Matt, like you said, in the black garb fighting somebody in the Daredevil costume was just – is priceless. Uh, but it was really interesting to me. The second time I watched it, I really keyed in on it, is that Matt was winning that fight until oh, yeah, Dex started throwing, started using his throwing skills to to throw things at him. Even that last – moment when he throws when he gets him with the scissors there at the end yes. he actually throws and I, I watched it carefully this last time a, a little while ago he actually throws the scissors over his shoulder where he could have just stabbed Matt with them but he throws them through the air and you can see in the, the stunt work and whether I don't know if they did CGI or how practical it was I don't know uh, but you can see the you can see the scissors fly through the air as he's pushing Matt back and then it goes into Matt's shoulder. So it was a really, really cool moment. And I just want to say, you know, for Karen, you don't say stop or I'll shoot. You just shoot. <laughs> you know? <laughs> this guy's killing people just a few feet away from you. And you don't have a conversation with him. You shoot. You know, maybe he would have dodged it. I don't know. But still, you uh, it just bugs me in TV shows. And I did, I was a little confused by this and maybe you can remember when was, was Dex, has Dex and Karen, have they met in the show? No. So was he trying to speak to her as if, because he knows that she has a relationship with Daredevil? You know, do you think? I think Fisk was giving her information giving at him that for, point. Giving Dex information? Uh, give okay. Dex, yeah, information about okay. Karen. And people that he was affiliated okay. with. So that was a way for him to go, oh, okay, yeah, this is Matt Murdock, and I'm going to portray right. him. Right, maybe. I just, it yeah. just, it took me out of it a little, a little bit because. It was, a, yeah, it did take you out of the scene for a little bit because you were just like, wait a minute, is this Matt? No, it's not Matt because the voice Well, is yeah, different. no, I knew it wasn't Matt because Matt had just been in the room. No, it just, it just confused me when yeah. he said, it's good to see you again, Karen. I was trying to figure out what he what he meant by that, whether maybe he's been stalking Karen also. I don't know. Maybe maybe Fisk put her, him on a mission to actually go look for Karen. Yeah, Who maybe. Knows? I don't know. I, it just it really it, it just it just was a it, it was a moment where I kind of was was very quizzical. And like maybe huh? there'll be something more about <laughs> it later. Yeah, I had one quote, and I'll uh, I'll just do mine. Is because we yeah. already kind of talked about it a little bit. Was when when Foggy and Karen are in the car, and Foggy says, "Has Matt been a crappy friend?" He didn't use the word crappy, but has Matt been a crappy friend lately? <laughs> Without a doubt, I, I just loved that that idea that Foggy is telling her, "Look, yeah, Matt's just because Matt is has been a bad friend to us doesn't mean we get to be a bad friend to him." To uh, yeah, him. I, I yeah. really really love that. You had a few quotes here? Uh, yeah, the first one would be Karen saying, Foggy, can you just talk to me as a friend? 
not a lawyer, just as a friend. But it was so sincere that for her that she had to tell Foggy about Matt. Then you owe me back rent <laughs> to Matt after the cold open. Yeah. You know, it's like she sees him and she goes, you owe me back rent. And that was so Karen to say that. The, these people are friends and have been through thick and thin, and it just shows the within the conversations themselves yeah. of who they are. And that's a credit to the writers and to the actors that are actually out there doing it. And, you know, that's why we love these shows, because they showed heart in what they're doing when they're actually filming, creating, and writing. So, you know, I, I just love that idea. The next part would be uh, Sister Maggie saying, once someone in need pushes you away, you need to find the strength. There's so much in those words. It's that, that person's way of finding a way in their own. I've been there a few times in my life. Sometimes you have to be alone to know what you need to do for yourself. But Sister Maggie knew that about Matt. He needed that moment to know what he needed to do for himself. You know, basically just to find his way. Sometimes we all need that at times. You know, we need that kind of solidarity and to reflect and think. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I thought that was a good, yeah, a good quote. So we had a couple of additional notes here. We've already kind of talked a little bit about one of mine, but just the fact that I found it interesting that the FBI, because they put Dex on his suspension, kind of pushed him right into Fisk's hands to be used, like you said, and manipulated. Yeah. And then um, just that we're starting to see this conspiracy kind of come into focus. We saw in the last episode that Karen no or she doesn't have the proof of it because nadine kind of got on her because she didn't have the actual evidence but she's like i know that fisk now owns the hotel that he's a prisoner in and then later when we find out that fisk had convinced that prisoner to stab him that he was putting all these things in motion to get himself released from prison and get him to that particular hotel we're starting to see all that come together i really think it's interesting oh definitely yeah it's all interesting everything is coming together slowly <laughs> We're getting a little bit here and there within specific scenes yeah. every episode. Yeah. My only little bit would be Matt helping Karen out when she does her research. That was really intense. And then Karen and Matt working just together alone. That was amazing because they're back to where they were. So it shows that they are true friends and they're just doing what they need yeah. to do. Yeah, my only other thought was question was who do you think is the leak in the fbi do you think it's it's nadim's boss i'm hoping it's not nadim but it's because somebody fisk knew that jasper was at the bulletin before everybody else knew and because yeah. he sent that suit to dex so that was before foggy called the fbi and told him told the told nadim that he had matt at the, the newspaper building also. So I'm just wondering who's the, who is, is feeding Fisk his information? How is he getting it? And um, I don't know. What do you think? Do you think it's the, it's Nadine's boss? Do you think it's somebody else we haven't seen yet? I think it's somebody we haven't seen yet, or maybe it's Nadine. I hope not, man. I really, I really hope not. <laughs> I know. I, know. I, I will be very that... disappointed in this season. If we end with Nadine being with them going back and showing us all the things that Nadine did, that was a bad guy kind of, thing that would i would be very disappointed well we did watch Watchmen, <laughs> so there's a lot of stuff going on yeah, in that yeah. so. <laughs> so we we had some feedback about um the the season as a whole uh from our good friend laura you want me to go ahead and read that or do you want to read it yeah go ahead read it okay um this is this is from laura she's our good friend on facebook uh, uh she says i wish i hadn't watched this over a year ago i might have some feedback for you i'll just say that this was the best of the three seasons even without my favorite electra and charlie cox and vincent d'onofrio absolutely killed it if disney has a clue they'll do whatever they can to get these two back on screen as matt murdoch and kingpin but only if they can keep the show the dark, gritty drama it is. I don't want to see a Disney-fied Wilson Fisk. <laughs> uh, and I, I totally agree, Laura. I don't, I don't want to see a, a Disney-fied Kingpin. No, uh, yeah. no. Keep it dark. Keep it a little bit dark, yeah. 
they have to go into those realms. And with uh, Black Widow being PG-13, uh, they're going to keep Deadpool as a rated R. And a lot what's going on within Disney and with the Dark Realm and everything that's going on with Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. So I, I think they're actually going to go that dark path. Cool. But I, I'm hoping that they would do a side movie. If they actually do a another Daredevil movie, that would be amazing. Introduce him into the MCU, but have him hit you know, have his own particular movie, you know, that, that we'll would see. be my, that would be my request as a fan, but, uh, I don't have any podcast recommendations this week. Uh, I didn't have any to well, strange indeed lock and key. Yeah, definitely. And then walking dead cast, <laughs> walking dead cast. will be back next week and uh, walking dead talk through. We'll yeah. be back next week. Uh, walking dead starts, Mark, we are recording this on Friday, February 21st, The Walking Dead comes back on Sunday. Yeah, I know, and I get to watch it after we podcast. <laughs> I'm hoping. I'm hoping it's going to be It's, it's on be AMC Premiere. Is it? Is I'm hoping. Is it? Have, have you seen it? Is it already up on there? I'm not near my TV right now, so yeah, I'm yeah, sitting here know. talking to you, so, sir. Exactly. So, <laughs> so we, need to, we need to wrap this up then so we can watch The Walking Dead. Yes. <laughs> yes. And uh, all of you listeners, yeah, he mentioned The Walking Dead talk through. That's on Talk Through Media. And uh, you could hear me and Brian Malosh. We do a uh, Walking Dead podcast based upon The Walking Dead itself, which is called The Walking Dead Talk Through. Brian might not be on as much within the next season because he's dealing a lot with the Picard cast. So if you listen to the Star Trek Picard podcast on Talk Through Media, Brian has a lot going on because you guys have been filling him with a lot of feedback. And I know, I love Picard. I've yet even to watch the new episode. Steve has, and he sent it's really me good. feedback. I, it's probably my favorite. <laughs> I will go on a limb and say it's my favorite of the first five. Yeah, well, I, it's got Four seven of five, nine. Whatever one and I love Jerry Ryan. So I, I love seven of nine. So, and I, I'm a huge fan of Voyager, everybody. So, you know, Brian can make fun of me all he wants. I don't care. <laughs> but uh, regardless, uh, you could go listen to the Picard cast on Talk Through Media. And you could hear Kyle and I on the Walking Dead Talk Through on Talk Through Media as well. So, we'll be sending out multiple podcasts this week on our Facebook page so that you could, you know, that will be linked so that you could actually go listen to it. So uh, I suggest those. So you can hear us on Spotify, Google Play, Apple iTunes, or whatever podcast player of choice. I think Mark uses – what do you use, Stitcher? Stitcher? I use Stitcher. Uh, yeah, so we're on Stitcher as well. Uh, whatever podcast player of choice you have, give us a listen. Give us a review if you can. We'd love to hear from you. You can check out our new website at panels to pixelspodcastcom You can check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash panels to pixels you can also email us. That's old school there. Email us at <laughs> panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels to pixels one. The TO is spelled out right there in the middle and the number one at gmail.com. You can call us if you have a phone <laughs> at 845-350-2095. And we are on YouTube as well. So if you are one of those people that likes to listen to your podcast through the YouTube app or YouTube on your TV, check out Panels to Pixels there. Yeah, definitely. And if you want to support us in any way, always go to www.redbubble.com slash Panels to Pixels podcast. And you could actually buy merch from us. And it actually supports our podcast and what we do here. Very cool. So, uh, I already mentioned it, so I'm a co-host on The Walking Dead Talk Through with Brian Malosh on Talk Through Media. Brian will be taking a little bit of a hiatus. He will be giving his input within specific episodes every week. Kyle and I will be uh, taking the reins based upon The Walking Dead Talk Through each week. And you can hear me right here, of course, and I leave voicemails on various podcasts uh, that I that I listen to and TV shows that I watch. Yep, and you could hear Steve all over the place. Wow, you're you're on Strange Indeed. You're on Picardcast. What else did you do? 
TV podcast. Oh, wow. Been that I've been yeah. sending. I've been sending. I send them my initial thoughts after the, I watched the episode the first time, and then I and then I flesh it out more for. Yeah, it's shows. awesome. So you can actually hear yeah. Steve on all various amounts of podcasts. So. All right. Thanks, everyone, for listening. This has been a great show. I'm Steve. And I'm Mark. And we'll see you on the next time. Good night. Good night. Good night.